There used to be a hamlet beyond South Tidegate in Western Lanosha. Halfstone, it was called. Some years prior to the Maelstrom's founding, Leviathan rose from the briny depths and set about unleashing watery hell upon us. On that occasion, the company of heroes put him down before he could do too much damage. But when the bastard came next, this time in the wake of the Calamity, we were not so fortunate. Weary of ravaging our shoreline, he summoned a tidal wave which fair leveled Hearthstone and washed the soil away for good measure. The area was subsequently occupied by the Sahagin. Aye, the thrice damned creatures transformed it into a spawning ground for their brood. Given the quantity of crystals stolen to feed him and his legion of thralls, we can be fairly sure that Leviathan is stronger now than in his previous incarnations. If that sea demon is left to wreak havoc, what befell Hearthstone may well befall a larger settlement, even Limsa. That cannot happen. The primal must be stopped. That was ever our objective, Admiral. But how are we to achieve it? The sea is Leviathan's uncontested domain. The ships of the Third Squadron could not close to within a hundred yards of the Primal, nor could their cannons pierce his defenses. I have read the reports, Master Thancret. Our warships may as well have been bloody pleasure barges for all the good they did. Seven Hells! Is there no way that we might strike back? The Company of Heroes defeated Leviathan, having first lured him into an inlet. But we must needs contend with him upon the open sea. It will avail us little to consult past experience. Admiral, if I may. Speak freely, Marshal. By all accounts, Leviathan's most formidable weapon is the very sea itself. Waves and whirlpools, tides and currents, all these things are his to command. The key to victory, I believe, lies in disarming our foe. This, in effect, is what the company of heroes achieve with their ruse. We cannot lure Leviathan from the sea a second time. But what if we could weaken his hold upon the element of water? I have heard of devices capable of such wonders. They draw upon the power of corrupted crystals, I am told. If mounted upon a ship, such a device might be used to prevent Leviathan from bringing the full force of the sea to bear against us, rendering him no more dangerous than any other sea serpent. Of course! Sid built a similar device to grant the Enterprise safe passage through Garuda's Tempest, did he not? Begging your pardon, my lady, but to give credit where it's due, this is something I heard from an old arcanist friend of mine. It makes little difference who thought of it first, so long as it works. Beg the specifications of this device from your friend and I shall pass them on to our people at Naldic and Vermelis. But before we proceed any further, I would voice one concern. Piercing Garuda's defenses is one thing. Suppressing Leviathan's attacks quite another. In matters of science, I am as a babbling babe, but I cannot well imagine that such a feat would be possible without a veritable mountain of corrupted crystals. The question being, do we have a ship big enough to bear such a burden? Mayhap not, Admiral, but too might. Recall you the tale of Mistbeard's greatest haul? It is said that he lashed two ships together, side by side, the better to bear his plunder. By your leave, we might attempt to repeat the trick. The gods know it would be quicker than building a new vessel. 
Mistbeer did this. Truly, Marshal, upon the subject of the Pirate King, you are as a scholar. Now, from what I have gleaned of these matters, the device will need to be in close and constant proximity to the target. To wit, we must lash our twin vessel to Leviathan. This in itself will be no small feat. Ramming speed will be required, but given the weight of the cargo, that will only be attainable with the aid of a towing vessel. Suffice it to say, the task of piloting said vessel will entail considerable danger, and I would not ask it of another. I volunteer myself. It will be dangerous for all involved, but we have no better recourse. Very well. Commodore, assemble the remnants of the fleet at Morabi Bay. Give priority to our soundest vessels. The repairs can wait. Storm Marshal Slafierson, command of the operation is yours. I want that twin vessel ready to sail post haste. At once, Admiral. And then there is the small matter of slaying the beast. The fate of Limsa Lominsa rests upon your shoulders once again. Go well, warrior of light. So, a few things there. One, uh... Obviously, because we did the quest earlier for Holebreaker Island, we know that he is actually the last of the Mistbeards. And it's interesting because I wonder if Merrillweb knows it too, because, like, the grin on her face and the look she gives him when she says, like, you're quite the scholar on him, like, makes you wonder if she knows that he is Mistbeard. Because the look on his face was like, oh, you don't know, do you? Like... Kind of interesting, but maybe it is something that she does know, and he's just like, you're not going to tell on me, are you? I don't know. But it's just an interesting little thing. Plus, that's why he, they showed that bit where he kind of, like, nods to me, and I nod back to, to the, the... He nods to the Warrior of Light, and Warrior of Light nods back to him. Like, they're, um, they don't... They know each other's... Well, he... She knows his history of, of being, uh... Misbeard. So... But yeah, the other thing is, remember how much trouble we went through to get, like, one good corrupted crystal to go through good, like, uh, to go through, uh, Garuda's defenses? Like, we went through that whole quest line to get one crystal in a pot to use, and now we're gonna, like, load two boats full of corrupt- Where? Where are we getting all these corrupted crystals, and how are we getting them so fast? Crazy. It's an amazingly fun idea, like, fantasy story-wise, but, like, logistically-wise, it's just not reasonable at all. Beings held as gods also exist in what you call the Far East. Legends tell us that they walked among us in days of yore, but I confess that I never truly believed them. That I should live to behold one is humbling and horrifying in equal measure. Now that I have come face to face with the Primal, I do begin to understand why the Garleans fear them so. What is it? A message, Admiral. I judged it best that it be delivered at once. I am listening. According to the Yellow Jackets, a man has appeared who claims to have defeated Leviathan. One of the Company of Heroes. The details are yet hazy, Admiral. We have dispatched one of our own to question the individual. Hmm. I am disinclined to put any store by this claim. And even should it be true, it is as Yustola said. None save the Company of Heroes have bested Leviathan, and we know how they went about it. 
If this man is of their number, what could he tell us that we do not already know? And yet, having waged Limbs's survival on wagered Limbs's survival on two ships, some rope, and a pile of crystals, can we afford to ignore this man? If his testimony could yield us any manner of advantage, should we not hear it? Damn it all. The twin vessel will soon be ready. We have no time to wait for the Maelstrom's report on the supposed Primal Slayer's claims. Sophie, dig him out and learn what he knows. At the very least, it will spare you the torment of waiting for the reckoning in idleness. The man you are looking for is believed to be a resident of the Grey Fleet in Lower Lo Nosha. The Storm Private sent to question him should already be in the vicinity. May your journey prove fruitful. You guys know who this is going to be, right? I don't have to tell you, do I? Oh boy. Now look here, you. You'll have your bloody story right after you carry those sacks of grain over to the mill. But, but sir, that's what you said before you had me pick those oranges for you. And before I mucked out the chocobo stalls. And before I rolled that millstone over to the mill. And also before... Gods, man. I've worked three days straight without a wink of sleep. Three days. And do you hear me complaining? Bah, I suppose some of us just aren't made for the rougher stuff. All right, all right. I'll give you what you want. Never let it be said that old Tactrum ain't a generous soul. Now, pick up your ears, because I won't be repeating myself. Too modest, see? Besides, there's only so much epicness a man can take in one sitting, you keen? Ahem. The tale of Tactum's epic victory over the dread primal... Leviabetus. Now, Leviabetus, huge, make no mistake. To give you an idea how big, each of his scales is about as wide across as me members long. Oh my... Wow. They made that joke. I need a second, I'm sorry. I just... They made that joke in the Final Fantasy game. <clears throat> and that's no mean feat, let me tell you. Wow. I mean, he is a Rogadin, but at the same time, look what he wears. He's not packing much in there. When I fought him, I could barely see for all the brine he was pelting me with. Must have been a lagoon's worth at least. He even knocked me trusty axe out of me hand at one stage. Of course, that proved to be a grave mistake. <laughs> what happened next? Why, I grabbed him by the tail and tied him up in knots. But not wanting to take all the glory for myself, I let me mates in the company of heroes handle the rest. Like I said, I'm modest as well as heroic. Mayhaps too modest. Now, there's some say you can never truly beat Leviabetus. <laughs> Leviabetus sounds like a disease. I'm sorry, but you've come down with Leviabetus. Oh no, is it terminal? Barry, you're already dead. No! That you've got to learn to live with him and make the best of a bad situation. See? Leviabetus is an STD. You can't cure Leviabetus. You just, once you get it, you call everyone you've ever had relations with. I mean, why am I why am I censoring myself? He already made a joke about his member. Um, you, ca you call everyone that you had relations with. This is the most offensive episode I think I've ever done. You call everyone you've ever had relations with, and you let them know that you have Leviabetus, and that they need to get themselves checked. And then you get some medicine, and you just learn to live with it, because it ain't going away. Nope. Once you got Leviabetus, you always have Leviabetus. <laughs> what? Not the company, though. Ah, it's, it's you! I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I was just enjoying the attention, is all. I, I take back everything I said. 
I was never part of the company of heroes. I'm no marauder. I'm actually a complete coward. I'm nothing. I'm Chocobo Dump. N no, I'm the maggots you find wriggling in the Chocobo Dump. I have to lie to women to tumble them. Because I have Leviabetes. And then I have to tell them afterwards that they might also have Leviabetes. And they need to go get themselves checked at a doctor. And... <laughs> This is the horrible episode. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to lie to women to tumble them, and that don't happen much. My member's tiny. It's pathetic. I told you it's because he's wearing these tight, tight, tighty tight. You don't look. If you want a nice member, you don't wear whitey tighties, okay? Tidy whiteies or whatever. Same thing goes for bluey gooeys. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> Composure. I sure as hell didn't fight Leviabetes, but I do have medication for it. Uh, but I have seen him with my own eyes. It was a fair few years back when I was working as a baker's hand. I was shirking me duties one day, ordering about the harbor when I saw it. A great big mass of sea serpents, some bombs off the coast. With the fleet of galleons making straight for it, cannons firing. I was so bloody scared, I soiled myself right there and then. What? Oh gods, just remembering that they made me soil myself all over again. <laughs> and that's one of the ways you can actually get Leviabetes, is if you soil yourself on a regular basis. Hey, hey, wait. If you're just asking about Leviabetes, it means you're planning to fight him, ain't you? Well, take care. He really is terrible. Dreadful, I tell you. If you're not careful, you'll end up in his gullet or at the bottom of the sea. Why, you worthless lying whore, son. I can't believe you made me handle Chocobo Dom. Sophie, this has been Philia. Were you able to learn aught of use against Leviathan? I beg your pardon. Leviabetus. I see. This is unfortunate. I'll go talk to my doctor. I can't believe we we only had that one night together. How could you do this to me, Soapy? <clears throat> that is unfortunate. At any rate, I have tidings for you. The twin vessel is now complete. Yes, it's now canon. I, I made Soapy and Menthilia have a tumble together. And she got Leviabetes. Baby. Will you wait you at the moor by... <laughs> I can't stop laughing about it. I'm sorry. Will you wait you at the moor be dry docks? Pray, make your way here as soon as you're able. Oh god, I hope I recorded all that. I'm told your jaunt to the Grey Fleet proved fruitless. My sympathies, lass. I'll wager it served to take your mind off the events of recent days, though. But enough of that nonsense. The moment of truth is upon us. The twin vessel, the war leader, I call her, is complete, and she surpasses all my expectations. In addition to her prodigious tonsage, she has been fitted with, plato uh, with a platform that you and yours might maneuver freely in battle. I would mention also that she is nigh unsinkable, but I'm not one to tempt fate. The World Eater and her crew stand ready. My friend, just give the word and we shall bear you to Leviathan. Ah, I know that look. You are ready. Having been constructed in some haste, the World Eater may not be pretty, but I assure you she's capable. She has been fitted with what our friends at Naldic and Vamilis are calling an elemental, an elemental converter. Assuming the thing works, it will use the power of the corrupted crystals on board to rob Leviathan of his hold over water. Depending on how the battle unfolds, you may well need to activate the device manually. Keep that in mind.
It is expected that the Sahagan and their thralls will attempt to come to Leviathan's defense. Accordingly, the Maelstrom will once again employ diversions. Dancred and Yishtola, I would have you assist in this effort. If it is to fulfill its purpose, your diversionary force must not want for numbers. By your leave, I too would volunteer my blade. We would welcome it. Having seen you fight in Sapsa, I dare say the fishbacks will find your presence highly diverting. Dancred and Yishtola, if you would join the third levy, and Lady Yagiri the fifth. But what words have I for the woman who has made a sport of slaying gods? Only these. Go warily, for the sea is an unforgiving place to wage war. May the navigator guide you through the storm, warrior of light. I would echo the admiral's sentiments, and add a few words of mine own. Know that we all have the utmost faith in you, Sophie. May the crystal bless and keep you. Trying to fix this, but 